What's up, guys? My name is Andres. This is the Strong Friendly Money Show. We teach dads how to take care of and improve their fitness, their finances, and their family. Thanks for coming back. Four more tips today on uh, basically dad life in, in general. So first, if you're going to get into... So I'm a real estate agent here in Ventura County. I hear on the show, we go over a lot of different you know, investing, real estate investing, just like family stuff. But if so, if you're going to start real estate investing, it's great to do it on your own. And you, everyone might start off that way because, you know, you, you just have to start off somewhere, right? You got to start off one property is your is everyone starts off with one property. But, uh, you know, it might be a good idea to go in with a team, um, a partner, right? Somebody you have, your wife, right? Someone, someone to help you out. Uh, you have to. Unless you're going to do everything on your own, painting and you know remodeling, you're going to have to find a painter or a handyman or or a contractor to help you out. Um, you know you're going to have to need you're or you're going to need someone to take care of the finances, right? A mortgage person, loan person. You're going to have to have someone uh, to try and help you find properties. Could be a real estate agent. Um, anyway, either way, that's a team of people you need to have. And with every team, you got every team has a roster, right? So, if you're going to get into real estate investing, I also already spoke about in the previous episode about having a business plan, right? What's your goal? What are you going to do? How are you going to get there? How many? When do you stop? And what do you do when you stop? Great. Along with that business plan, you want to have a list of people that you are going to use as your team, and it's easy. To say, oh, it's all in my phone. It's all on my phone here. I just look them up and I call them or whatever, right? Because you're already doing a business plan, sit down and make a roster of people that are going to help you, right? List all the people that you may need or that you do need to complete a deal. And put their name and number, email, notes, right? This guy is a paint guy. But he's really, really, only really good at exterior, right? And if I need an interior paint guy, this is the guy I'm going to call, right? So you want to make, you know, write it down in a, you know, in a little black, you know, little book, right? Or in your phone. I mean, I mean, I have all kinds. I have notes everywhere, and it's probably a bad habit. In your, you know, iPad, you write them down in your iPad or whatever. Anyway, make a list, right? This is my painter. This is my contractor. This is my handyman. This is my loan people, right? And put their information there, right? That way, when you need somebody, and you want to always add people to the list, right? It's great to have the mortgage person, but if you can have two or three mortgage people on your list, that way you can have you know more to choose from. Great. Most important thing that I'm trying to get across here is you have to have your roster organize all the people that you use so that's easy to look at is easy to change even if you're gonna it, and it's even e great if you need to refer someone to somebody right someone comes to you and says hey you know and it's always good to help there's enough pie to go around for everybody i need a mortgage guy do you know well bam these are my three right these are my people their email address my notes say this is the best thing that they work on they are quick they are efficient they are fat right so you have all that there but you it's easy it's it's all in one place ready to go for you to refer to or you to refer from so have your roster of people there your team assembled um always be adding to it changing it putting notes probably the most important part uh, but it's it's the easiest thing to keep yourself organized right to have this piece of paper or document ready to go okay next um, well, should you have a partner, right? We're going over, you know, who your team is, right? Should you have a partner if you're in real estate? Uh, in a previous episode, uh, I spoke of, um, so you have to know how much time you have, right? If you, uh, have, so if you have an unlimited amount of time, great. You have time to go out to look for deals, to renovate them, do all the finances, the marketing. You have time to do all that. And you probably don't need a partner, right? If you work full time in the daytime from nine to five, or you work crazy hours, 
or you know you have you know I have a wife I have kids they need they deserve they expect time from me as well you might not have the total amount of time that you need to efficiently um, you know make find uh, complete deals right you might not have that just may not be in your cards right you may have all the money right you have a great job you have a bunch of savings that you want to use to invest you have all that great but you don't have the time or you're the opposite you have time right but you don't have any money or you're kind of in between right in those scenarios it might be good to get a partner right and they may be your buddy and then you may have known them for a long time they're great they have beer everything's great you guys laugh um but in business business is business right so uh any person that you're going to consider your partner in a financial situation you want to formally write down what's going on right so you've decided that you have one but not the other of what you need to um invest in real estate um you find someone who has what you don't have. You want to write a document that says, we are going in together to uh, invest in real estate, right? This person is bringing this to the table. This person is bringing this to the table. At the end of the day, when we say we're going to um, take the profits from what we're doing, this is how they're going to be dispersed. This person gets this much. This person gets this much. I would say that's probably the most important document you're going to have in your investing career. Uh, you really need that because you don't want to have it come down to, hey, we sold this, we sold this home. You know, I deserve eighty percent. You know, because I did the, I did, I gave all the money. I deserve eighty percent, right? And the other person is like, no, nah, you know, I did, did all the work. I deserve it, right? So you want to have all that written down, right? These, this is this person's job. Right. If you're the money person, marketing person, and the other person is the contractor guy, um, making sure everything gets done guy, then you want to say, because, right, this takes this much time, this takes this much time, you're getting this much and you're getting this much. So um, if you want to get into real estate, you don't have everything you need to start. You want to start with what you have, find someone who has the other stuff that you don't have. Um, you want to. But the most important thing is you want to have a document that says this is how it's going to go down. This is totally how we're going to do it. That way, when it comes down to it, have it certified or witnessed in some way so that it's official. Uh, you want to say, all right, bro, this is what happened, right? We did it. This is what the document said, and this is what we're going to do, right? That's probably what will save you lots of headaches at the end of the day. So do you need a partner? Yes, if blah, 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 right? You don't have time, you have money, other way around, you might want to get someone to help you out. At the end of the day, if you guys, um, it may be rocky at the beginning, work out a lot of the bugs, but at the long, in the long run, you know, everyone's going to be making money if you guys do it right. And I will say that document is probably the most important piece of paper you guys are going to have. Um, so investing tip, <clears throat> in the previous episode, I talked about how you can look up con companies financial records details uh, on the internet they have to they have to give those away or, or post them somewhere um you want to look for companies that don't have any or don't have a lot of debt and just like personal debt right you yourself don't want to carry a lot of debt because making decisions when you have debt and making decisions when you don't have debt are two different kind of decisions. Uh, making decisions when you don't have debt, you're coming from a place of, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to say abundance, but you don't have any uh, negative feelings when you're making this decision, right? It's making it. You're making a decision so you can grow and go move forward because you have nothing weighing you down. Okay. When you have, when you're coming from a place of having debt, the moves you make are different. They may not be as ambitious. They may not be as big. Uh, they may be um, incorrect because you're thinking of the debt that you have, right? So, as you know, as happens with personal finance, 
you want to find companies that have no debt because one, they make decisions with a clear mind and two, it quite possibly shows you what kind of company they are, which is probably the most important. They understand that not having debt is important or their decisions that they make are better and don't cause them to have debt. So um, when you're trying to invest, find something to invest in, look for their how much debt they carry and be on the lookout for uh, companies that don't have debt. You know, even though company the debt-ridden company may have like, you know, the stocks rocking and you know all this stuff, you know, all these positive things that go that that they may show everybody. Uh, you know, I I would um, I would bet to say that you know the company that does not have any debt is probably. Uh, more business savvy and in the long run that may be something that you want to have in your portfolio um, and it may be that the rocking company that has a lot of debt is going to run into something that they can't fix and the other company that has no debt you know they can just keep going doing what they're doing and for a longer period of time than the other one so companies with no debt look for them could be something you want to add to your investment portfolio um, so that's it for the strong family money show today only had three this time. Um, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm a local real estate agent here in Ventura County. Uh, from time to time, well, five times a week, I post uh, market reports on uh, my real estate website. I might start linking them here. Look, look for them down below in the description. One city a day, five times a week. I go through the whole county. Um, visit our sponsor, freshcoffee805.com. Without them, we couldn't make these episodes. Uh, roasting and delivering uh, fair trade organic coffee to your door. If you're here in Ventura County, it's delivered within days of roasting it, so uh, please visit them. Like and subscribe, share. I'm Andres. This is the Strong Family Money Show. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.